Let's move over to the outfield and see what's going on over there. This list was an absolute nightmare to make. So instead of a top 10, I've decided on a one-time top 15. Making a top 10 was literally impossible. Let's dive into the list. Quick, smooth and detailed. You know the drill. Let's go. Jordan Walker was one of the most highly rated prospects coming into the 2023 season. The number 21 pick of the 2020 draft was impressive in his rookie season and his first hit came on opening day of Alec Manoa. Which would have been even more impressive if it wasn't for Manoa getting lit up in the Florida Complex League. Anyway, Walker played to an impressive 276, 342, 445 slash line and a 787 OPS. Hit 16 home runs, drove in 51 runners, scored 51 runs himself and stole 7 bases. Walker's walk rate of 8% and strikeout rate of 22.4% are fairly impressive for a rookie and is going to get time to develop in the Cardinals lineup. Walker has shown glimpses of pure power but also pairs that with great bat to ball ability. He's still young and he won't top the list in production numbers as long as he's down in the lineup but can bring your team 20 plus home run power, speed and all of that paired with a good average. He's still young, volatile and unpredictable but could be a great addition and with an average draft position of 122nd, Walker does have a lot of upside. Brandon Nimmo was one of the few positives on the Mets in 2023. He's incredibly consistent with what he delivers and delivered once again in 2023, even when the Mets forgot what winning is. He played to 274, 363, 466 slash line and an 829 OPS, hit a career high 24 home runs, drove in 68 runners and scored 89 himself and he stole 3 bases. With an OPS plus of 131, 130 and 127 over the last 3 years, Nemo is literally the definition of offensive consistency. The only point of interest for me is a 4.5 increase in strikeout rate. But then again, his walk rate actually saw a minor increase as well, so it's not overly concerning. But it felt like something I should mention in a breakdown. Even if the Mets are mid once again in 2024, Nimmo is likely to deliver your team around 20 home runs with a 265 or higher average and around 65 RBIs. Let's call that considerable power with decent production and a good average. With an average draft position of 155, Nimmo is actually a fantastic option near the end of the draft and can be a reliable part of your fancy line. In at number 13 is Seiya Suzuki. He was probably a disappointment for most fancy managers in 2022, but delivered in 2023. He played to a 285, 357, 485 slash line and an 842 OPS. Hit 20 home runs, drove in 74 runners, scored 75 runs himself and he stole 6 bases. He's a standout player in most categories shown on StatCast. He hits the ball hard, hits it hard consistently and stands out in the chase rate. Suzuki doesn't chase a lot of pitches and pairs it with a 10.1% walk rate. It has to be said though, a BAPIP of 341 definitely helps his batting average and you should expect a small decrease there in 2024. Suzuki is a very complete hitter and can bring your team contact, 20 plus home run power and decent production. With an average draft position of 111, I'd recommend Suzuki as your number 3 or 4 pick in the outfield. In at number 12 is Nick Castellanos and honestly, I was tempted to put him a lot higher on the list. Castellanos was part of a very strong Phillies offense and was a major contributor all season. He finished 2023 with a 272, 311, 476 slash line and a 788 OPS. He 29 home runs, drove in 106 runners and scored 79 runs himself and he stole 11 bases. He strikes out a lot and barely walks which doesn't help with his OBP and he's challenging Javier Baez for the crown of the worst play discipline in the MLB. But Cassianos can bring your team good power with a lead production in a strong Phillies lineup and a good average. With an average draft position of 98, you should aim to draft Cassianos past the 8th round to add depth and mainly production to your fancy lineup. Cody Bellinger is next. And yes, I know, he doesn't even make the top 10. And you're probably thinking something along the lines of damn, this European dude doesn't know shit about baseball. And you might be right. Listen, Bellinger had an outstanding season and was one of the best players in the league. He 
I played you 307, 356, 525, slash line and an 881 OPS, hit 26 home runs, drove in 97 runners, scored 95 himself and he stole 20 bases. That's very impressive. And it's all positives. His strikeout rate took a huge dip, his walk rate increased and he hit above 300. And now the negatives. For starters, Bellinger is still a free agent and we don't know where he's ending up. His advanced metrics, compared to his awful 2021 and 2022 season, don't really differ all that much compared to his standout season this year. And after an extreme high like 2023, usually comes a significant decrease in performance. It's hard to really put value on Bellinger and how good he actually is, just because we saw 47 home run seasons and 165 average seasons from him in the space of 3 years. And with an average draft position of 60th, Bellinger might be one of the more overpriced picks in the draft. We move on to the top 10 and we start with Adolis Garcia. Garcia was an integral part of the Rangers lineup all season and was one of the major contributors to the World Series win. Garcia is an incredible powerhouse and finished the season with a 245, 328, 508 slash line and an 836 OPS with a fantastic 39 hole runs, 107 RBIs, 108 runs scored and 9 steals. Garcia made leaps at the plate and slightly decreased his strikeout rate but made a huge increase in the walk percentage and chases a lot less. It really looks like Garcia is still figuring things out and seems to be improving at the plate year after year. He still strikes out a lot and his batting average sits right around league average. But Garcia can bring your team a lot of raw power to all fields, production and is likely to increase his steals again in 2024. With an average draft position of 45th, keep in mind that he's an early pick and that there might be more complete options available with an ADP that might be inflated because of his fantastic postseason performance. Anything past the 50 is a steal for me. In an alternate universe without injuries, Trout sits first without any competition. Unfortunately, Trout remains incredibly injury prone and wasn't playing up to his standards when he was fit. He played 82 games in 2023 to a 263, 367, 490 slash line and 858 OPS, hit 18 home runs, drove in 44 runners, scored 54 himself and stole 2 bases. Trout is 32, has been struggling with wrist and back issues once again and he feels a little bit like the sport is moving past him. It's hard to say these things about him and put them this far down, he's got such a fantastic career behind him and you're kind of just expecting for him to make that beautiful comeback season in which he plays 150 games and is the undisputed best once again. But you might be living on hope. A fully fit Trout can bring you everything you need to dominate your fancy leagues, but I wouldn't count on seeing Trout fully fit ever again. With an average draft position of 51, Trout is available further than usual and I wouldn't blame you for making him an early pick and hoping for the best. Just keep in mind that you probably won't be able to rely on him all year. Yeah, welcome to the outfield. We're only at 8 and it's superstar after superstar. Tatis came back from suspension but was like every Padres player part of a year-long offensive slump and finished the season with a 257, 322, 449 slash line and a 770 OPS with 25 home runs, 78 RBIs, an impressive 91 run scored himself and 29 steals. Not really numbers we're used to from Tatis and when we look at the advanced metrics Tatis has a very low bat pip of 289, which definitely made an impact on his average and a lot of people expect a significant rebound of an Amno. And so do I. He's still one of the most exciting and promising players in the league. And if he can avoid doing anything stupid in the offseason, which believe me, isn't as easy as it sounds for him, he could rise to all levels in 2024. The questions about impact of the PEDs and whatever they did or didn't do is something I'm not going to comment on, although another down season could only make the noise louder and louder. With an average draft position of 11th, Tatis is a very early pick by most people. If you can get him anywhere past the third, Tatis is a steal, but I wouldn't pick him in the first round. Luis Robert Jr. finally delivered in 2023. He was finally able to show the league what he's all about and finished the season with a 264, 315, 542 slash line and an 857 OPS with a career high 38 home runs, 
drove in 80 runners while scoring 90 himself and he showed his considerable speed with 20 steals. He's probably the only White Sox player ever making the list, but that's also a negative for him. It's hard to drive in runners when the people around you don't do anything. And there's more. Robert Jr. obviously has his injury history, but also increased his strikeout rate by over 9%. And with a 5% walk rate and 40.7% chase rate, it's only a question if he can re-deliver on this season. If he can reproduce 2023, he can bring your fantasy team above average contact with a lead power, decent production and good speed. With an average draft position of 36, Robert is a good third round or later pick. Corbin Carroll was one of the most promising prospects for a long time and has delivered on that promise since he made his debut in 2022. In 2023, Carroll played to a 285, 362, 506 slash line and an 868 OPS, with 25 home runs, 76 RBIs and an impressive 116 runs scored, and the speedster obviously stole 54 bases. He also hit 30 doubles and an even more impressive 10 triples. It's pretty simple. Carroll is a complete offensive package that can deliver your lineup contact, power, production and elite speed. Even more impressive and valuable is the combination of OBP and speed, which contributes to this immense threat on the base path. With an average draft position of 9, Carroll is one of the most wanted players out there and I get why, he's a very solid first round pick. In at number 5 is one of the most overlooked players in the league, Kyle Tucker. The Astros have a very strong offensive lineup and Tucker is one of the main pieces in their offense. He was once again impressive and finished 2023 with a 284, 369, 517 slash line and 886 OPS with 29 home runs and the incredibly impressive 112 RBIs, he scored 97 runs himself and he stole 30 bases. Tucker's underlying numbers are fantastic and more so are very consistent. Tucker is another complete offensive package that can bring your lineup a lot of contact, power, speed and monster production. I'd almost call him a slightly more powerful, but also slower and more seasoned version of Corbin Carroll. And I mean that based on the stats, not on the type of players they are, don't worry. With an average draft position of 4th, Tucker could be a great first round pick for your team. In at number 4 is Aaron Judge. Judge is an absolute offensive powerhouse and the Yankees severely missed him when he was injured. He played 109 games and played to a 267, 406, 613 slash line and 1019 OPS with 37 home runs, 75 RBIs, 79 runs scored himself and 3 steals. Judge stops a lot of hitting categories on Stackhouse and it's quite clear that he will be an absolute offensive demon in 2024. I wouldn't be too worried about those so-called injury concerns. The toe injury this year was a freak accident and Judge has played over 140 games in both 2021 and 2022. He can deliver your team a good average with freakish power and great production. With an average draft position of 8, Judge is a solid first round pick. Julio Rodriguez has largely confirmed his outstanding rookie season. He went through a rough spell early on in 2023, hitting 238 to a 706 OPS up until June but bounced back and finished the season with a 275, 333, 485 slash line and an 818 OPS. He 32 home runs, drove in an impressive 103 runners while scoring 102 runs himself and showed off his elite speed with 37 steals. Another complete offensive package you could say, right? Well, he is. But we have to look at some negatives. With a 24.5% strikeout rate, low walk rate and very high chase rate, j has a few negatives to his offensive approach, more than others in this list. But then again, who am I to discuss 30 plus home runs? Exactly no one really. With an average draft position of 3rd, he's a great first round pick that can deliver exceptional power and speed, with good production and above average contact skills. In at number 2 is Juan Soto. Soto started slow in 2023, but was one of the few offensive highlights in the Padres lineup and finished the season with a 275, 410, 519 slash line and a 930 OPS with a career high 35 home runs, 109 RBIs, 
97 runs scored himself and 12 steals. Soto's qualities are very clear. He possesses one of the best eyes in the league, which is sometimes even a negative in his game. Soto only slashes 239, 242, 439 when he's behind in the count, often relying too much on his strike zone understanding. Soto is now a Yankee and will play half of his games in an extremely hitter-friendly park, especially for pull-heavy lefties like him. Soto can bring your team very elite on-base ability, with tons of power and elite production and contact numbers. A short right field wall and Soto sounds like a lot of homers to me. And with an average draft position of 6th, Soto is an elite player that is a certainty in the first round. And in at number 1 is Ronald Cunha Jr. And for good reason. There were some questions surrounding Acuna before the season, but he proved every daughter wrong and he proved them wrong in a big way. The NL MVP finished the 2023 season with an insane 337, 416, 596 slash line and 1012 OPS. He had a career high 41 home runs. He had a career high 106 RBIs. Scored a career high 149 runs and stole a career high 73 bases. So basically, just a career high season for Acuna. And honestly, there's nothing to overthink about. He's the most complete package around. His strikeout percentage dropped more than 10%. His walk rate increased and overall, Acuna was just the best player in the league. He's the number one pick in every single fancy draft and he can bring everything you need. Power, speed, contact and on-base ability. If you can pick first, don't sweat it and pick Acuna. Look. No honorable mentions today. I don't want to go down the route of naming every player that could do well in this list and I've already named 15 today. These are the chosen ones, but if you have any questions about any player you might have your eye on, obviously just drop a comment down below and I'm happy to help you out. Make sure to check out Salary Cap Sports if you're still looking for a fantasy league or a new way of playing fantasy baseball. You get 50 million to draft your own team with any player you want and you get 4 trades a week. Player prices fluctuate based on real life performance, which adds another cool element to the game and if you know your way around stats, or you subscribe here, which is something you should do anyway, you can really build your own super team. I'm playing over there too, so I hope to see you guys in the leaderboards. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Time to have a look at the pictures next week. Take care. Peace.